A year ago today, Ofsted released their findings from their rapid review of sexual abuse in schools and colleges, communicating a clear need for change in how the further education sector responds to peer-on-peer -peer harassment. It shone a light on the normalisation of harmful behaviours and stated clearly the expectations that Ofsted now have of FE providers to take action consistently and urgently. Reading the report, it was heartbreaking to see the extent at which our young students are being exposed to behaviours and attitudes that have no place in education. As a parent myself, it's troubling to know that these behaviours are often happening away from home and also out of sight of members of staff who have the opportunity to intervene. This is why, as the Ofsted report points out, we need to do more to amplify the voices of young people in speaking out about their concerns and their experiences. I believe an institution-wide approach isn't possible without centering the student voice. Doing this starts with removing barriers to reporting. The review and our own research, which we'll be begin to share early next month, highlight a number of barriers to reporting. Some of those barriers include fear of repercussions, such as victim blaming and ostracization, fear that the issue will be taken out of their hands, concern of being called a snitch, concern that the accused party would get into trouble, and what I personally find the most troubling, fear of not being believed. The report highlights a number of ways in which schools are demonstrating good practice in breaking down these barriers to reporting. Practice such as listening events to create safe spaces to speak up, learning and education through RSHE and anonymous questionnaires to identify the key areas of student concern. The data from these was then able to inform further action such as training. At Culture Shift, our goal is to support the further education sector in accelerating the rate of change by using technology to shift perceptions and behaviours surrounding abuse, harassment and misconduct. Our online reporting platform gives learners a place to speak up about inappropriate experiences at a time and place that feels safe for them. We also offer online resources to help educate learners and normalise appropriate behaviour so that they can make informed decisions on how they seek support. And whilst connecting students to support is our ultimate goal, we also hugely believe in the power of anonymous disclosures. The reality is these behaviours are happening in your school or colleges whether learners are telling you about it or not. Anonymous disclosures are your gateway to seeing a world that is too often shut off to the people that are best positioned to create change. It is without doubt that safeguarding is the important cog in the wheel of keeping young people safe in education. Fortunately, as communicated in the report, safeguarding is generally well covered on inspection. Inspectors are prepared and the complaints are generally dealt with well. In spite of this though, it's impossible to ignore that the issues persist. It's unfair to expect teachers to identify all of the risks posed to young people. If, as the report highlights, educators lack the proximity and sight to these issues and lack the vocabulary to always communicate and engage in conversation with young people on these issues effectively, then how can this be a perfect solution to the problem? This is why empowering students to use their voice is so important. As an FE provider, you need to keep on the pulse of these behaviours and cultures transpiring in your institution. One year on from the Ofsted review of sexual assault and harassment in schools and colleges, what are you doing differently to eradicate this issue?